Welcome back everybody to the Ready or Not lore series where in today's episode we will be returning to the Mindjot data center. This video will be divided up into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theories as to where the world and story may go in the future. from the content found in the residence of the now convicted pedophile Michael Williams have led the LSPD to the distribution source. That being a Mindjot data storage facility. Our suspects on site are the Mindjot private security personnel. They are all well armed and seemingly on edge. Civilians on site are the Mindjot staff, which at this point is basically a skeleton crew, and they are responsible for managing the last remaining servers. With that, let's listen to the briefing. All right, listen up. We've got a warrant service on Mindjot Data Center in Kalina Beach. It's inland, pretty dusty. It's also pretty dim outside. The facility is located on 52 East Temple Hill Street, and we've got multiple entrances for this one. Side one will lead us into the lobby, side two contains an access doorway, and side four has a loading bay entrance that leads into the data storage areas. An element on scene has determined that there's a possible entrance on the rooftop that leads down into a second level. Now. We're dealing with a lot of expensive hardware in the structure. As you all know, Mindjot is on the downslope, so we don't expect much recourse if shit gets broken. But we want to be mindful of property damage. It will also limit the capabilities of our cyber crime teams if they have to work with a bunch of destroyed drives. Threats inside the facility are unknown. Mindjot has a security layer that is well armed and on edge. We don't know if these guys have also been paid off by whoever is running the show here. I mean, times are tough and all it takes is a little money to keep desperate people floating. I want to stress that this facility has had a number of robberies recently, some by individuals posing to be police, and a kidnapping that led to the death of one of the security staff not too long ago. If these guys aren't aware of what's going on at the facility, they could very well be on edge enough to send rounds your way out of fear. If you guys keep it slow, you should compromise authority to bang rooms and limit the security team's effectiveness, we shouldn't have a hard time getting control of the situation. Because of the prior robbery where the suspects were disguised as police, we're going to have marked units visible, and we're going to start loud hailing as soon as we're in position. If they don't surrender, I take that as a sign that they might know something about what's on that hardware they're guarding. The data center is also running a skeleton crew, so it's likely we've got a couple of civilians within the compound. These guys all look very similar, so check your shots and be mindful of what is beyond your target. Any questions? Is this tied to that streamer we detained last week? Mm, it looks like it. We scrubbed metadata from the child pornography on his computer that pointed towards this place being the source. Something big is going on here, so we've got to make sure not to damage anything that might get us closer to nabbing whoever's in charge here. All right, time is tight. Gear up and let's roll out. Rally is on Truman Boulevard and Temple Hills. We'll gather there and get any fresh information from the other element on scene. Thames is also en route. A question a lot of people had prior to this updated version of the map was, why is this private security firm firing on cops? Well, now we know it's because of three reasons. One, the facility was robbed by people posing as cops, so they are very distrusting of anyone wearing a badge. Two, there was a kidnapping of Mindjot staff resulting in their apparent deaths. And three, they may be in on the whole black market illegal dealing scheme and have been paid off to protect the servers at all costs. Whatever their true motives may be, this somewhat explains why private security will open fire on cops. All things considered, things have not been good for these guys as of late. Arriving on scene, not much has changed from the prior version of this map. The biggest thing is the date change from August to December, and it's either the 16th or the 5th, which can be found in the toll booth right out front, or the evidence secured. Both dates contradict each other, so let's just say December 2025. Also in this toll booth, we can find a new recording. If there are any further questions, come see me. 
So this just reiterates what we already know. There have been many fake cops coming into this place, resulting in the staff becoming incredibly jumpy. Looking around outside, there also isn't really anything new, so let's enter the lobby. As far as I can tell, all the magazines are the same. However, when we look behind the front desk, we now know this image of a fake policeman has a much darker context than I originally assumed. We also now know that this report of a streamer getting swatted was about Michael Williams and his subsequent arrest. Moving to the hallway, we see a sign that says, Remember Artist. Announce your presence to any would-be trespasser. Remind the suspect that you are armed. Terminate any remaining threats in case of non-compliance. Inform local authorities. Secure camera recordings. Time to call a lawyer. So not only did the fake cops make the mind job private security jumpy, but it's their policy to basically shoot first rather than de-escalate the situation. Nearby, we can see a sign that also says what to do during a power outage, which to me ties back into the whole roving blackouts hitting Los Sueños due to the derelict dam. Inside the meeting room, there are quite a few new things. A laptop displays another article about Michael Williams with a notepad nearby saying, Melky Toes f***ed up. Wipe servers, move the Zulu server offline, lock out internal, divert all incoming traffic to China, and initiate leak protocol. Lock it all down. A projector shows a graph that I'd assume to be a representation of MindJot's financials, showing a substantial decline in revenue with rest in peace MindJot being around August. The two whiteboards nearby read, job opportunities. This place is on the way down, might as well find a new job, with open house senior developer, void backend server tech, and LSPD IT team. The other whiteboard has a game of hangman that should spell out board. Moving into the manager's office, we see a new email that reads, Jock, I need you to look into this AV storage unit that one of the guys brought to me. I can't find it cataloged anywhere. And it's a bit worrying that we have a drive connected to the system that doesn't have a tracking number or a code that fits our books. Can you please ask around and check the security systems over the last week, if we still even have that piece of shit still running? ASAP, please. On the desk, we can also listen to a new recording. Hello, just letting you know that Mr. Full is called to reschedule his appointment with you due to his daughter's birthday. He'd like to keep the appointment and have his associate Levi meet with you instead. Let me know if this is acceptable. Thank you, bye-bye. Basically, Amos Vol has to reschedule his appointment with Mindjot because of Janie's birthday. And in case you didn't connect the dots, the email that mentions this AV storage unit is Amos Vol's unit. And speaking of this unit with nothing else new on this map, let's look at the evidence. Which, by the way, thank you to all of you who reached out with the evidence. It is greatly appreciated. There was a lot of you and there's way too many of you to thank, so just all of you together, thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. First, we have a suspicious storage unit. This was a painted high-density storage unit used at the Mindjot data center. It features a strange hand-painted set of initials with an accompanying sticky note that outlines its potential contents. The initials read A and V, which is Amos Vol. The sticky note reads, at request of the user, propagate multiple backups to Mindjot cloud servers and to physical storage. Requires approximately 250 terabyte drive. Content of the storage unit set includes a multitude of encrypted images. Treat sensitively. Next, we have a printed resignation letter that describes the facility manager's current outlook on Mindjot and his discontent with many of the suspected illegal activities occurring at the time of its writing. And finally, we have a ransom note, a letter written with newspaper clippings and an attached image of what appears to be a data center employee, Keith Arnold, who is still yet to be located by the police. It is unknown who sent the letter or its age. However, the letter reads, bring data drive racks 500 551 to 128 North Hills within seven days. Do not call police or trap, else you get Keith Arnold's head arrive at door of Mindjot facility. Followed by a newspaper clipping that says, November 8th, 2023, still have not found the remains of the five missing hikers who went hiking in the Los Sueños National Forest. Investigators are remaining hopeful. And that is all the new lore for this map, so let's talk about a few things. First things first, this definitely connects the map in a much more clear and concise way. Before, I was really grasping at straws to identify when each map takes place. Now we know definitively this unknown pedo that led to the Mindjot raid was in fact Michael Williams. We also know that Mindjot is a lot more than some storage facility for creeps. They deal in all sorts of illegal ventures, such as black market arms, data encryption, and employing trigger-happy private security personnel who are more than likely to have a stock in all of this. Moreover, Mindjot staff are more than aware of the company's wrongdoings, with some being 
being complacent and some, like the manager, trying to dip out before they get roped into the company's downfall. With all that being said, I am most interested in this kidnapping. I imagine the group that kidnapped Keith Arnold and his friends are more than likely involved with Mindjot in some way. They know enough that Mindjot data drives house sensitive information that a lot of people would either want personally or want destroyed. So whoever these guys are, they wanted something buried to stay buried. Hopefully one day we'll get closure on this situation because this is actually really, really fascinating. All in all, Mindjot is finished. They were projected to last until August of 26, but after this raid, they are definitely going under a hell of a lot faster.